In this vlog I want to show how you can, uh, for instance, develop an electronic circuit on, um, in, a, in a way that I always do that <coughs> on a board with brass pins. That's here. At first it's important to shield the backside with tin plate. You can do that uh, by gluing it with this type of glue, contact glue, and then punch in all the, say, brass pins. Of course, not too fierce, because it's not a, a good idea to pierce them so far in that they get a connection with the tin plate on the backside. Anyway, uh, this is the first idea about this circuit. I want to make a very simple, say, shortwave radio on um, around 7 megahertz, and I only want to use one IF filter, and that's here. By the way, this is not a real IF filter. Uh, it's approximately on 300 kilohertz and the bandwidth is very wide. I've tested that before and perhaps showed that in earlier videos, but anyway, I want to try it. And when you want to make a shortwave radio with only one IF filter, it doesn't matter much on which frequency that IF filter is. It could be between, say, 300 kilohertz and, say, uh, 800 kilohertz. In a superheterodyne radio, um, we convert the signal that is received out of the antenna into the antenna coil and then to the mixer stage and with a separate oscillator. But in this circuit, I wanted to make a so-called a uh, self-oscillating mixer. So in the collector lead I want to mount this. This will be a mixer circuit but at the same time an oscillator circuit. And uh, I've never done that before. I've always used separate oscillators in all my radio videos on YouTube. So this is an experiment. Anyway, when you want to do such an experiment, there are a few good principles when you work, say, with this method, brass nails. And I want to show how I have built up that circuit. This is the first uh, photo that I made. You see here the IF filter, you see all these brass pins, and you don't see wiring. I always use the positive lead here in the top. That makes it very easy to compare it to the real circuit uh, in, ele in electronics. And here a negative line on that lower side. My idea is to uh, make the oscillator with a varicap, variable capacitor. I want to use normal diode, so I've mounted here a potentiometer to set the uh, voltage to the varicaps. And the potentiometer here is to, uh, say, set the detection. Give the detection diode a forward bias. This is the next phase of the circuit. Now you see here the negative lead and the positive lead. And there are two potentiometers wired in. One is 1K for the uh, audio amplifier, low frequency amplifier. It has its potentiometer on the emitter lead. It's a grounded emitter circuit. And also here one potentiometer for the uh, transistor <coughs> that has to amplify the high frequency. Both are 1K. And that's a kind of normal value. 
in case of a uh, grounded emitter circuit. And the capacitor that will be um, soldered to the node, the wiper of this potentiometer, is essential for the amplification. And for low frequencies it's always 10 microfarad and I've soldered that in, I'm absolutely sure. But for the high frequency unit that has to amplify in the future that high frequency signal. I'm not sure. So I did not uh, uh, solder in here uh, at first sight a capacitor of a certain value. Um, I think it will be approximately 10 nanofarad or 4.7 nanofarad. That's a good value to uh, get amplification in a high frequency amplifier working in this frequency range, approximately say 7 MHz. I also indicated here with stickers emitter base collector. That's very important. You can make easily uh, say uh, strange bad uh, connections. The, the BC547 that I'm going to use here has its pin connections here, but the BF199 has its pin connections in a completely other way. And to prevent confusion, uh, I've made here a kind of sticker so that I cannot make uh, mistakes when I'm working on this radio circuit. Well, that was more or less all to tell. Um, always a few good ideas when you want to make a radio circuit or a uh, audio small pre-audio amplifier, so especially pre-amplifiers for audio. Use a resistor here in the positive lead. I've now used 100 ohms. That's good. Could also be 470 ohms. And then directly after that uh, resistor, an electrolytic capacitor going to the minus, to ground. That's always a very good idea. Uh, you can bridge that with a, say, 470k uh, resistor and a 0.1 microfarad non-polar capacitor. And the reason is that in that way you have here a filter. This is a filter unit. It also has the effect that the current to such a, say, sensitive uh, radio circuit or a sensitive audio amplifier cannot get too high. For instance, when you, uh, say, connect here a lead acid battery, the or another type of battery that can give out such an enormous current, uh, you can easily burn up, when doing experiments, your transistors. So, this is a kind of protective measurement, but <coughs> sorry, also a, uh, a good filter to, uh, say, damp out all kinds of strange voltage effects on the power supply lead. Always important when you make sensitive circuits, in this case a shortwave radio or a audio amplifier. And of course when your audio amplifier needs say a fierce current to give out uh, a big sound, you of course don't need this. Uh, this will limit the current in such a case, a 100 ohm resistor. Uh, but on the other hand, you can split up such a circuit when this was a <coughs> audio amplifier and this was the preamp and here was the end amp. Uh, split up it, split it up and send to that end amplifier uh, a fierce current. But to the preamplifiers hooked up to the same circuit, uh, smaller current, so a 
kind of current protection. Protection to high, to high currents with the help of such a filter. Could be 100 ohm, 470 ohms, approximately 1000 ohms. That are values that work in the voltage range of say 9 volts up to 24 volts to protect the say sensitive earlier circuits. So that was all. Perhaps there is a third uh, photograph. This is the next stage where I solder the wiring here in advance to the uh, low frequency transistor, the high frequency transistor that has to amplify the signal out of the IF filter and here also in advance a 22k potentiometer that goes to the oscillator. Oscillator transistor will be here, it will be a BF199. The first transistor high F amplifier, I don't know what it will be, perhaps a BF199 NPN silicon or perhaps a BC547. Uh, that's normally an AF transistor but it has very good properties. So you can use it as a high F transistor, high frequency transistor for a preamplifier. Uh, between say 2 MHz and say 9 MHz. So this is the whole setup, the first ID, I hope it will succeed. There's always no guarantee when you make experimental circuits that it will succeed, but anyway. It's a great advantage to uh, develop electronic circuits. And I use a few very simple principles. Uh, I always use or almost always use the grounded emitter transistor circuit. That gives good results in general. But on my YouTube channel you also find a grounded base circuit and perhaps even a grounded collector circuit. Anyway, 